Hello, hello, hello. Today we are doing something a little bit more exciting than normal in our basic videos. We're looking at our first, our first self-made video effect. And we're going to make this awesome, uh, let me just read in a file, this awesome little video effect. I'm just going to play a track. And I'm going to keep talking over said track so that copyright doesn't come down on us like a ton of bricks. So what it's doing is it's listening to the left and right gains that are coming in, the start in the X and Y dimension, and then adding a lot of planar noise on top of it. So we get this really cool glitchy effect over the ten, uh, sort of techno music as you can hear it. I uh, will just stop that there. What I'll do is I will continue playing in the background for a bit to let you see a bit more of how it works. Uh, and I will have to fade out the music in the background so we can't actually hear it. So we're loading in a music, use, uh, loading in a video. You can use Dozer if that's what you prefer. But when you have a much more detailed, uh, this is all blank alpha in uh, Dozer, so it doesn't really work that well. So when you use an actual video, like the pupil one from yesterday, you get a much more exciting uh, displacement. <laughs> So we're bringing it in, we're doing some quick maths with the dimensions of each video that comes in. And then we are running it through a matrix to store our values where we're applying that maths. And then we're using jit.coerce to give it a little bit of character. And we've got values that can control the minimum and maximum displacements for us. And then if we really wanted to, we could add something similar over here so that we, we handle the scale slightly better. So. Uh, we could change this value to something like 500 and this value to something like 350 and the amount that these uh, this image would would change is gonna it's gonna differ but you know when we explain how this patch actually works that's gonna make much more sense I'm just gonna stop the music finally right so let's talk more make so as always, I'm going to start my max patch. We're going to... Oh, we're not going to do that. We're going to toggle our metro again anytime you want, as long as it's it's at a reasonable pace. And then I'm going to jit.qt.movie. And I'm going to set a 320 by 240 here. All of this is going to be done on the CPU. So if you are running on a fairly old PC or Mac, then this can be a bit of a struggle to get real time on anything above sort of 320 or this is 240p. Uh, I know that my fan or my, my laptop would have, it would get angry at me for trying to put through something like 720p here. It could do it, but just bear that in mind. And then first thing we're going to do is we're going to organize our path. So we're going to do jet.p window. And I want to make sure it's the same size. So I'm going to set size 320 by 240. Plug that in. I'm going to read dozer.mov. I'm just going to check it's all working. So turn it on, read my movie, boom. We're up and running, so we'll, that can come down here. So we've got those are out of the way. We can bring across our movie. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the real-time size information. The real-time size information for our video. And that's just in case we decide not to go with these 320 by 240 images. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to add a get dim, which stands for get dimensions. Get video dimensions. All we need to do is we need to pass this into the top of jit.qt.movie. Oh, it's all going wrong. I've got patching cards snapping everywhere. So now if we send that in, you can see it sends out a message called dim 32240. So we're going to root all messages that match dim into this. So that means it's not going to get confused. Say when it loads a new uh, video, it will dump out as well. So we want just the dimensions. So we're going to root dim, and then we're going to unpack it. 
uh, if I can spell unpack. <laughs> unpack, two zeros. I'm gonna bring that over here. And I'm also going to, I'm gonna send a new, me new message that says dim dollar one dollar two and I'm going to put root dim straight back into that now the reason for that is the next stage of our project is going to be jet.matrix I'm going to call it video just so it has a coding title it's going to be four channel our R, G, B and A and I want this to be by default 320 by 240 but if we were to change the, the resolution of our video we need this matrix to update as well so we send it our dimensions just to make sure so now what I need to happen is every time I read or load a new movie it gets the accurate dimensions and then updates it all so I'm going to add a bang to when this read button's pushed and we're going to put that straight into the dot of get dimensions and I'm also going to add a, just a plain read and do the exact same thing so into the top of jit.qt.movie and it's my, my uh, button so now every time I push it you'll see that it loads up there and the same will happen with this if we were to pick a different sized movie right so let's start working with our JIT matrix I'm going to change the name of mine to video 1 because I still have the other patch open down on my second screen here and it's going to play havoc with everything when it's passing messages and you'll note if we plug in our movie into our window again nothing happens and that's because we're not actually doing any editing yet. What we're going to use this matrix to do, matrix, well, control, dimensions, dimension, shuffle. So we're going to introduce two dials. And we're going to use the information we're getting from our jit.qt.movie dimensions to control these and set that to the maximum, which otherwise would normally be 128. So I'm going to do a message, size, it sees, size dollar $1. I'm going to plug that into the both of them. And I'm going to do my left inlet and my right inlet. So now my x coordinate is max, max is mapped to this, and my right, my y coordinate is max to this x and y maximum change so what good is that to us well let's have a look so if we were to add in a oh not whatever that was a pack message with an integer With a message that said dim dollar one dollar two you'll see that we can control this pixelated effect as we reduce the amount of dimensions so we're at a 26 by 26 picture here so if we do that for each of our x and y on a randomized basis based on the sound coming in which is what we're going to do we'll get a really cool effect. To do that, I need to scale this value, which is zero to whatever my maximum is, by a, a random. I plug that into my pack, I plug that one in as well. So now my dials will go from the low zero to the maximum on each of the X and Y. And now we're gonna add a random to affect both of these. And we're going to do that based on our easy ADC. We're going to plug that into our gain meter setup. Now, if you've watched any of my other tutorials, these are all the same. So our slider value goes in here. No, it doesn't. Our output gain goes in there. We duplicate it. And then our slider value goes into there. So now that our gains are locked, and we've got two channels. Super. But 
if you let me make some noise, you'll see that these pass out nonsensical float values. So I'm going to use my best judgment on knowing how my volume is set up. I'm going to pass this load message of 120. And that just means that I want the gain to be 120 out of the maximum 158 that it can be. And I know that that'll give me values that sit somewhere between 0 0.1 and 0 0.9 in normal listening. So if we do the half of that, 0 0.5, let's say, that means that our our values are always going to flow in sort of this mid-range here. So it's never going to be too little and it's never going to be too much that we're just seeing the normal image. And I'm going to do that, scale it to 0. And I'm going to type in 320, but we're going to get what our maximum is. So this is for the Y scale. So now whenever we update it, our scale will update so that 320, or now 240 coming through here I know from this value, it will update. And we do the same for our X scale. That's why it's not working, scale. And then we want to plug it into the high output value. Durr. Plug that into the respective dials, and then, and then plug in each dial to the top of the scale. And then I'm just going to run this from the meter here, which isn't really efficient, but it's easy for this tutorial. You can play about seeing ways where you can turn the signal coming up here using snapshot rather than just taking the value out of meter. So I'll leave that over there to remind you. Could use snapshot for sig for signal processing. So you can see here, depending on the volume coming in, depends on how how unpixelated our image is. The noisier, the more accurate. And then already we're starting to get this really cool flickering effect when the music cuts in and out, and I'm listening to a lot of sort of heavy bassy stuff at the moment to really send home this point. And these values are going to be affected by not only the loudness of the music externally, but also the gain control in here. So that's why I know 120 is a good value for me. Alternatively, I could just change the maximum to be 120, or raise their lower, I should say. Alright, so we've got our, our jittery film coming in here. Now let's play about with some colours, let's make it a bit more exciting. To do that, we're going to use the jit.coerce, which coerces a matrix into different types and planes. So if you've ever watched any sort of time travelling movie and they talk about jumping dimensions, that's what we're going to force our video to do. We're going to make it think it's something else for a second, then bring it back. And by default, I'm going to set it up so it's got four planes and it's a float 32. I If we plug in our movie, you'll see that we start getting this sort of almost old school effect coming through. And we're going to do a very similar method to what we had here. So when I plug it in, you can see that we start getting this really cool effect where it's starting to look a bit pixelated for us. And the variables we're going to change is called the plane count. So literally we're going to control how many different, essentially, amount of numbers it has per cell. Turn that into an integer, and let's scroll up, oh there we go, now we're getting somewhere. So clearly, the higher the better here, I have no idea what we're looking at. And that's exactly what we want, we want to create these really cool effects. Right, so I know that I want my plane count to sit somewhere between sort of 0 and 20, all the way up to 100 when it peaks. So I'm going to use our scaling method again. I'm going to do scale 0 0.1 to 0 0.55. And then I'm going to do 0 to 100. I may even stretch it a bit and say something like 200, just to make sure we get a high enough value out of it. Plug that into our gain. 
and you can see that we're going to get some nice values here. And still, because we've got this lovely scale in it, when the song's silent, we'll still drop to nothing. And maybe a bit strong. And just so I have some manual control over it, go down an integer and plug it into that high value. And for the sake of it, I'm going to take a float and plug it into a low value just so we can control both. Edit old edit um, input high value just so if your your volume's really loud or really low. And then we can edit output high value. So this the, the higher this higher equals more distorted higher equals less distort range so if you turn this one up it means that things it will still distort but it won't jump about as much if you turn this one up it means that the distortion will go through the roof and you'll be very hard to go back to a blank screen super I'm going to set that to about 0 0.9. Let's see how that looks. There we go. That's, I love the bit where it's between quiet and planes and you get just these flashes of colour going through it. That's, that's where you start really appreciating how cool you can make things. And just to show you, I'm going to bring in, I'm going to bring in our close, close up eye again. So this is a nice, really slow piano track that's playing at the moment. Can you imagine this on a big screen in front of a home? Maybe it's a bit strong. So we turn down there just... And then just for the sake of it, let's have a look at what car looks like. So you can see that instead of it dealing in a, a sort of 32-bit variable, this is working in streaks like a TV would. So this is more representative of TV and modern monitor looking at its RGBA channels. But maybe we don't have enough going on here. But it's food for thought. You can have a look at course more yourself. I personally am always going to stick with Float32 just because I'm mad with it and I love my glitchy art like this. Uh, but have a play about with it, see what you can add on to it and that's that.